because you said you had some yourself that you wanted to talk yeah. about. Uh, you know, a couple, well, I know there's many, many very interesting and helpful things in the book, but one of the first was the Loa system from ourhair.net. Mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned that in the book, and this is very interesting to me because since I've become a natural newbie, I've noticed that most people ascribe to the Andre Walker hair classification mm-hmm. system, and I didn't know that there was another way that you can figure out what type of hair curl pattern that you have. So you mm-hmm. have the lowest system in your book. Could you go into that and explain what that is? Sure. So basically, the Andre Walker. I'll first start by talking about the Andre Walker. He basically categor- gives care four basic categories, ranking from one to four. One is straight, two is wavy, three is curly, four is kinky. And then he breaks, breaks kinky hair down into kind of like two hair types. A is something that has like a very kind of, um, I would call it a, an S-shaped curl pattern, and B has more of a very tighter curl pattern, which is often described as a Z um, shape. So that's kind of like you said, the more popular system, but the lowest system is something um, a little bit of an alternative. And there's kind of... They break it down into like L, O, I, and S. And so basically you're an L if your hair has all been right angles and folds with a little bit or no curve, then that's what they would consider a daughter L. Um, your daughter O, in the, the O and lowest, if the strands of your hair roll up into the shape of one of several zeros or like little spirals, um, your daughter I according to their system, if you have, like, no distinctive curve or bend in your hair strand. And then your daughter S, if your hair strands look like a wavy line with hills and valleys. Um, And I know that seems kind of abstract to people, so it's often better to look at it on the Internet or in the actual book so you can really relate to it. But generally, those classification systems really help you if you're trying to communicate with other people online about your hair type and seeing what products um, work for you. And so it's not necessarily something I ascribe to strongly, but like I said, it's helpful in terms of, like, carrying on a conversation about products. Don? Can you hear me? Yep. All right, everybody. Sorry, technical di- – I don't know what's that. going on today. Um, okay, so I – think that the lower system is actually a bit more easier to understand just mm-hmm. because I know that many black women have a mixture of hair textures and hair patterns. That's a pretty common thing. And so I've, I've noticed on, for example, YouTube, various videos that women put up and say, I don't know what my curl pattern is or my hair type is. And they show the video and they say, I think I'm combination. And, and that's true. They are combination. So I think they should try the lowest system. And you can check it out at ourhair.net. And of course, it's also in the book, Thank God I'm Natural, and you can check it out there, and that will probably help you get a better idea of what your curl pattern is. Right, now, and for those of you who are newly natural, I would just say that part of the reason we have, we suffer such from, from breakage so much when we have relaxers is that because our hair, our hair has a different curl pattern throughout, it's not like your hair is one uniform texture. So when you're using a relaxer of any strength, generally it's going to be, too strong for some areas, too weak for some areas, and just right in some areas. So for the areas where it's way too strong, that's probably why you tend to see breakage on on a regular basis. So Now, Christia, I want to ask you something about natural hair in the workplace. Now, mm-hmm. as a professional woman, I mean, you're a lawyer, so that's a pretty prestigious profession. What has been your experience in wearing your natural hair in the workplace? Well, have I you got that, that can I touch of... your hair thing? No, you got... actually I haven't. It's funny because I tell people at the very beginning of my book, when I graduated from Harvard Law School, when I first went natural and I had like a little short natural because I had to cut my hair off because of a little mm-hmm. mishap that I won't go into, but mm-hmm. I wore a wig for two years to disguise the fact that my hair was um, tightly coiled or kinky. And like I said, this is back in 2002. You didn't see a lot of women um, with natural hair. But I found that my own obsession with kind of good hair and trying to assimilate in the workplace and make my clients and colleagues feel comfortable and that I looked just like them in some ways or I wasn't a threat um, actually backfired. And I I came very close to getting fired from my first job. So after that, ever since that day back in 2004, I pretty much wore my hair natural and I've never had any issues. I've only gotten compliments. 
um, on my hair. And like I tell people, my boss at my new job that I've been at for three years is worth $27 billion. He's not, at the end of the day, thinking how nappy my hair is. Right. Um, so I use that as a good example. Also, in terms of I've, I've done like six television appearances recently, um, and it's just weird. I was on TV on – how do I put this? I was on TV on Friday, and I'm on TV again on Tuesday. And it's just amazing – to, not to say amazing to see myself on TV, but it's amazing to <laughs> see myself on TV with kinky twists. And I was like, when, mm. when do you ever see someone on a news station with kinky twists talking about a subject as, like, an expert on the matter? And that just – it's not so much about me. It's just the image itself is just right. sometimes mind-blowing and just – just it's just mind-blowing to just see, wow, a black woman on the news. We just did a segment with five um, with five black women with natural hair on ABC News here in Chicago. And just to see, wow, black women with natural hair on a major news network in Chicago, and they all look amazingly beautiful. So Yes. And yes. I think that's so, so powerful. And this is actually a really good segue into my next question which is why do you think the notion of natural is growing and being embraced more and more by the black community? Well, I think, one, like I said, back in 2002, there wasn't a lot of information, but I think just in general there's a growing concern amongst our society about just taking care of ourselves. Um, So many people are dying of cancer, so it's like you'll see a lot of people eating better. A lot of blacks are shopping in Whole Foods way more than in the past. A lot of people in my family are doing the whole organic thing, the whole vegetarian thing. And my family loves, like, ribs, chitlins, and fried chicken and everything. But it's just I think there's a general growing concern amongst blacks as well as all people um, that something about our diet and our lifestyles are not, it's just not consistent with um, with having living a long life. I also think on some level I think there's a, a tremendous sense of pride that comes with having uh, a black president that mm-hmm. you just don't feel like you have to apologize anymore and that, there, that there's nothing um, outside of our reach. And so I think a lot of people just kind of connect with that experience. And then, I, like I said, I think the proliferation of blogs and Internet websites and people who are devoted to this issue and talking about this issue like yourself are making women feel like, wow, I have a support group. Wow, it's not that scary. Right. Wow, this is something I can do. So I think for those three reasons that that's why more and more women, I say, are coming out the closet and just saying, thank God I'm that. <laughs> so, and you know yeah. what? It, it's truly a community, Christia. I mean, mm-hmm. when I first decided to go natural, I literally went on YouTube to view the various how-to videos, and I learned that there are so many women on YouTube that just enjoy sharing that information, Mm -hmm. giving feedback, uh, doing different product reviews, and once I saw all of that, I was like, I can do this. I mean, I have mm-hmm. so many different resources to go to, and the women there are so friendly, and, and that was part of the reason why we started this show, because we knew that there was a community out there that loved their natural hair and just loved learning about it and talking about it. So I agree with you. Times have definitely changed, and hopefully more and more women will decide to go natural. But if not, that's okay, too. I mean, we we mm-hmm. love the, the straighties, as we say. Yep, um, yep. <laughs> We love them all the same. Now, one thing I want to ask 